Welcome to the 11th video in the tutorial series on Scilab and Xcos. Uh, in this video, we'll have a brief introduction to the concept of signals, transforms, and the unit step function with some uh, instruments in the Xcos domain that uh, will be helpful for further modeling. So before uh, we do anything else, let's open up the Xcos modeling environment. So in order to understand what we are actually dealing with, let's take the step function from sources take a step function we will need a clock for plotting from sinks choose a c-scope and simply oh my bad simply connect the ports before we simulate the system let's see what the unit step function is so the step time is the point in time where the function will be applied the initial value uh, let's uh, keep it at zero for now and the final value is the value it assumes eventually right so let's keep it as is let's try to see how the function looks like uh, we can see we've entered an endless loop and that is simply because in the simulation we need to set our final integration time let's set it to 30 seconds which is the default refresh period of the scope now let's run it and sure enough, we have the step function and it's so called because it resembles a step in its shape. So it's applied at one second in time and it has a final value of one. Right? But this is seldom how uh, step functions are in nature. So we'll try to model a more realistic approximation of the step function. And that can be done by going to continuous time blocks and importing the transfer function block. Right? I won't go into the details of transfer functions because that is into control systems engineering. I'll leave that for another video. Now what this transfer function essentially does is that it takes this uh, unit step input and, and transforms it in a way. Right? So how does it transform it? As you can see there are two parameters. right? The one in the numerator and one in the denominator. So let's start with the one in the denominator first. Before, uh, okay actually let me demonstrate through an example. Let's just simulate this system as is. Right? Right. So we see something that closely approximates the step function but isn't as steep. Right? So what happens is the term in the denominator, let's call it A for now. So 1 by A represents the time constant of the system, which means that at time equals 1 by A seconds, the signal will have reached 63% of its final value. So that should be 0.63 roundabout here. And as we can see that it is at one second, right? Now it will correspond to two here because we have started our signal itself from one second. So we have a delay of one seconds. So you can see that the two roughly corresponds to a 63% mark here, right? And the final value of the function is defined as the ratio of the numerator by the term in the denominator which does not contain s. So let's try fiddling with these terms. Now let's say if we have 4 here and 2 here. So we should have a final value of 4 by 2 of 2 and uh, we should have a time constant of a half second because it's 1 by 2. Let's see how the system represents itself. Yes, our final value is 2 and our time constant has to be 0.5 seconds. So here it will be 1.5 seconds because we already have a signal delay of 1 second. Right? So in order to understand how these two graphs are different, so what we'll do is we'll get rid of this. Uh, we'll get rid of this line. Right? We'll take these. Uh, okay, we'll have a single scope display only. So from signal routing, introduce a mux. As we've learned in the last video, mux can be used for plotting multiple signals on the same scope. So let's plot this one and let's also plot the original signal. Right? Control A, optimize, optimize. Right, so let's simulate the system and see how it differs from the actual. So here we can see, ah, my God, 
yeah so here we can see the difference in levels it's essentially because we've modified the the final value through the transfer function that we've applied now let's say uh, we actually changed it to have the final value of 1 then i think the changes would be more prominent right yeah so as you can see that that the transfer function closely approximates the input curve the unit step curve but it does apply some sort of time lag right so it eventually reaches the final value but there is a time lag and that is denoted by the term in the denominator which does not contain the s and the and the ratio of k and s like the numerator and the denominator term not containing s gives you the final value of the function now uh, that's that's it for unit step functions but i would like to introduce you to a very general concept in simulation environments which is the concept of parameters so in the simulation environment go to set context and here we can define the variables that we can use in our modeling environment so let's say for this particular application um, let's say k equals 4 and a equals 2 the graph we had before right now here if we have to make this function very general what we can do is we can call the same variables that we have defined in the set context part right so it will give you the graph that we had earlier and sure enough it does right so this is a very handy way of actually incorporating variables and not making your models too explicit making them general so that once you change one parameter your entire model can adapt to that changed set of parameters so that was it for this video and i hope you found it useful thank you for your time